Hello, and welcome to this giant bowl of popcorn that is my house. I'm Danny, and today we're going to be diving into some unfinished business. A well-known fact about me is that I am extremely good at starting projects and then setting them down and never picking them back up again. I am perhaps even the world's best at this. Now with that said, I would like to tell you about Cats and Lizards. Cats and Lizards is a furry comic about Apple Cider the Leoki and Roswell the Chameleon, two characters based loosely on myself and my wife Shelby. Let's take a look at the three comics that I posted of Cats and Lizards. First up, Cats and Lizards 1, just a cute and relatable comic about Roswell having audio processing issues. It did banger numbers on Twitter and Tumblr, so I knew I had something pretty good on my hands. Cider's design wasn't fully realized here yet, but that was no matter. The second comic is about Cider aggressively sharing a YouTube video with Roswell. Cider's design is more fully worked out, and the whole comic was a simple rough four coma. I was experimenting with how exactly I wanted to format the comic, and hadn't quite found my foothold yet. The third comic features Cider's creative restlessness. I would consider this one to be the most autobiographical of the lot, as anyone who knows me knows that I never shut up about wanting to make stuff and not making stuff. Once again, the format is different, and this time it's a full page. It was at this point that I had decided I wanted to make Cats and Lizards into a printed zine, and it was also the point at which I stopped posting Cats and Lizards comics online. I went to the drawing board and roughed out 18 comics for a 24-page zine. I finished the cover, cast page, and 7 comics. I still have 12 comics left to do, and I want to create a repeating pattern for the inside pages and a back cover as well. Before I start grinding out these remaining pages, let me show you what I have done. First up we have the cast page. It's only three characters, which really goes to show you how simple I'm keeping things. Then we have the first page, which is reformatted from the second comic I drew. I'm not sure if it flows better than the original, but I like it all the same. It's also drawn more neatly, which is pleasing. Next up we have the third page, where Blue invites Cider to film with her, and Cider politely freaks the fuck out about it. <laughs> this may or may not be based on any and every time someone has prompted me for a picture or a video. I sketched this out before having top surgery, so it's really funny and cute to me now. Next up is the fifth page. This one is fully fictional. I always wanted to play around with having a YouTuber character, and Blue has been really fun to write because of that. Of course, in the Cats and Lizards universe, YouTube is called Rabbit Hole. Unfortunately for me, as clever as Rabbit Hole is, it doesn't have any good alternative to YouTuber. Rabbit Holer just sounds horrible. <laughs> Up next are the 9th and 10th comics, which are designed to be a two-page spread that reveals that Cats and Lizards is, you won't believe it, a romance comic. I mean, what? Am I gonna make characters based off of myself and my wife and not have them fall for each other? What kind of married man do you take me for? Also, remember when eating at restaurants was a thing? Man, I really drew this stuff a long time ago. Up next is the 11th comic. I actually drew this one very recently and posted it to social media. Unfortunately, I never specified clearly that Cats and Lizards is 1. a project and 2. not fully autobiographical, so people thought I was just posting sad stuck on Maine. The next one is the 14th comic, which is the first Cats and Lizards I ever did, but reformatted to fit the zine dimensions. It was quite a challenge to adjust the layout the way I did, but I think the new one does flow better. And with that, I've shown you all that I've got. Now, let's hop into actually busting out the rest of the comic. This comic is the second in the zine, and it has been sitting half-finished just rotting away in Procreate for nearly a year. It was one of those comics where every time I looked at it, I was just like, ugh, it's gonna take so much effort to finish this. But today, I don't know, I had the kick necessary to take it on. The main reason this comic was so difficult to draw was that it has that small full background panel, and those little poses of Roswell weren't clear enough to go straight to line. I ponied up, though, and got through it with some preliminary sketching and determination. The background panel wasn't so bad in the end, and it was kind of fun designing Roswell's working space. I didn't end up having room on the desk to add a tablet, but I decided to pretend it was put away in a drawer or something. I'm trying to get reacquainted with Procreate lately, and it's been getting easier the more I draw, but I find that my lines are still pretty wobbly in places. I know I can set brushes to be streamlined, I just didn't because, well... I don't actually have an excuse. I guess I'm more of an undo button kind of man. <laughs> Procreate's recording doesn't track all the strokes you undo, so when I draw the tail it looks as if I got it right on the first try, which, oh my goodness, I did not. They were such a pain to get the curve just right. I used a lot of gray near the end to bring the comic to its final polish, and I think it helps a lot with how legible it is. And here we have the final comic. Roswell doesn't have as many solo comics as Cider does, but I try to make what they do have really count. Shelby also told me she liked this page, so I'm considering that a win. 
Page Six is up next, featuring my chance at redemption for filming the iPad and filming a comic. Did you see how pixelated Procreate's recording was? What a shame. This time drawing from the experiences Shelby had working in an escape room some years ago. I was feeling a little lazy while lining this, but the subject matter of the comic justifies it with Roswell's building meltdown. That said, I'm skipping over the traffic panel. No one needs to see me painstakingly draw a bunch of shitty cars. <laughs> This comic is, I believe, the only one to feature any incidental characters outside of the main cast, which is interesting. It was fun drawing some different cats and lizards for cats and lizards. It was also fun drawing Roswell's pained faces. I love drawing Roswell's eyes. I think they're so expressive. This comic is part of a two-page spread, with the next page being just a single drawing. Hmm. As nice as top-down camera work is, it does lengthen the footage quite a bit more than Procreate's time-lapse recordings. I've sped up the video here 2000% and I still have a lot more to voice over. I think I'll experiment with how I'm filming each of these comics. I might do real-time jump cuts for the next one and try to bring back Procreate's time-lapse but at a better resolution. Another interesting thing is I've felt so motivated to work on this project now that I'm creating a video in tandem about it. You'd think that I'd consider it double the work, but for some reason it's giving me just enough variety that each part of the process is really fun. I hope it's as entertaining for you to watch as it is for me to make. Such a nice sentiment, but what do you know? There's still more video to voice over. I'm nearing the end here, lining the last few panels left before adding all the text. Then to finalize, I go back through the comic and decide which panels to fill in with black to tie the whole thing together. And we're done. Here's the final page in all of its glory. I think the top three panels are a really funny sequence, and I like how the rest of the panels fall apart near the end. It's a solid page, as lazy as my line work is. Next I'm working on page 7, which is just a little sting drawing of Roswell not so triumphantly quitting their job. I drew Roswell in a hoodie instead of their signature tank top to show time passed between the previous comic and this one, and I wanted to play with their wardrobe. I gave them a UFO motif on their hoodie because Shelby is a big fan of aliens. I also think it's funny that in a world where people are all either cats or lizards, they would still have aliens with the same lore as our human world does. I revisit this idea in a later comic where Roswell talks about mythical elves, which just look like humans with pointy ears. I just think it's funny. I'm pretty proud of how this came out. It's always nice to have a page that's just a single drawing. It's striking, and more importantly, it's easy to do. Next we have the 8th comic, which is a page I thought once upon a time I wouldn't have to redo. Unfortunately, to fit with the format and style of the rest of the zine, it had to be done. Redone. Done again. I thought it would be interesting to see the side-by-side -side comparison, so I brought back the Procreate recording. Hopefully the quality looks crisp and not crunchy. I really like this page a lot, and I think it has a lot of character. It's always fun to see little montages in comic form. I actually caught a continuity error while lining this page. Cider has a laptop here, but in the other comic I drew, they have a desktop, so I changed it accordingly. I thought that was kind of cool. This is the watertight world building I worked so hard to create. Also, the bathroom panel was so hard to redraw. I definitely don't think it looks as good as the original, but you know, sometimes those are the sacrifices you have to make when you're tightening up something. And with that, we're done. Now the comic is in line with everything else stylistically. I definitely chose to do this one because it didn't require a lot of brain power, but I probably should have left it for later, as now all of the remaining comics are ones that need a lot of work. I think now is a good time to check our progress, actually. So at the start we had the cover, cast page, and seven comics done, and now we have the cover, cast page, and 11 pages done. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That means we only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more to do. We're more than halfway done. Let's take a little break from Procreate and draw the inside pages. I knew I wanted to have, like, chibi versions of the characters featured on this page, but my ideas were all over the place. At first I wanted a repeating pattern with lots of little drawings of the characters, but it's been a long time since I've created a repeating pattern, and frankly, I didn't feel like going through a bunch of trial and error to create one. Then I thought, well, it doesn't have to be a repeating background, but I could fill the page with lots of individual doodles. But then laziness took over again. In the end, I decided a drawing of the three characters chilling at the bottom of the page would look nice and clean. I didn't actually know if I wanted to include Blue in this drawing or not, as she's not one of the main two characters, but the illustration just looks more complete with her in the background. I'm sure it has something to do with the design principles of triangles or whatever. Hopefully this page doesn't look too noticeably different from the rest, as it's probably going to be the only page I draw in Photoshop. I didn't pay any attention to what size brush I was using, so fingers crossed. <laughs> Now that the recording isn't Procreate's time-lapse, you can really see just how much I'm hitting Control z This was really enjoyable to line, and it was nice not having any of the worries that come with filming top-down. 
I didn't have to worry about tilting my tablet out of frame or leaning my big head into frame. You know, I've come to really enjoy these character designs as I've been drawing them more. I feel like I've been collaborating with myself from more than a year ago, picking up the pieces and finishing comics that were roughed out so far in the past. It feels good to finally complete them. I feel like I'm getting some sort of creative project closure with each page I finish. Speaking of finishing pages, I finished this page. I decided at some point that I should use the back inside page for all of my social medias, instead of having it be a companion to the front inside page. I did film myself drawing this, but it's a little boring as it's just me hand drawing a bunch of logos and typing in all of my ads. Also I realized while I was doing that that I don't have the same username for any two websites. I guess that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it does make me a little harder to find. Oops. Oh well. Alright, back to comic pages now. All of the remaining pages are very rough, and this one in particular required two more rounds of sketching before I could get to the line work. It took me nearly two hours to get this to finish. That's a lot of footage to put on Dropbox and then download to my computer. That's how I get my footage, by the way. I have a PC, and I film in an iPhone, so they don't cooperate without Dropbox acting as a middleman. It's very time-consuming. This comic has sort of an interesting story. It's supposed to capture the feeling of being around two people who are like definitely into each other, but oblivious about it so it makes things really awkward. Well, I've been yammering for quite a while now. I'm gonna step away from the mic and let you listen to music while I sketch the rest of this page out. There we go. The sketch is finished now, and I can finally move on to lines. It was really fun to line this comic. I hopped right to the hug panel first. That one's definitely my favorite. You know, doing voiceover is really interesting. I feel compelled to over-explain what I'm going for or to narrate each brush stroke, but I refrain because I think the work does speak for itself. That said, I have to say something, don't I? I think that's why I've been talking so much about the filming process, which I'm going to keep doing now. <laughs> I'm going to get a better light soon and a white drawing board to film with so you all will be spared the side of my messy table. I actually kind of like the messy look, but it does feel pretty amateur hour, which I mean, fair enough, I am an amateur for this hour. I've been really wanting to buy a camera to film with too and I've been doing a lot of research. I say research like it's not just me watching YouTube videos. And the thing I've learned is that cameras are exceptionally complicated. Not only are they complicated, but they need a lot of accessories. Accessories I don't even have the name for. What's it's that attach to doohickeys that then need counterbalances and so on and so forth. I wish there was some sort of camera for dummies set that comes with everything I need, but that's just not the way the cookie's gonna crumble. My boyfriend gave me the sound advice that before I get a camera, I should probably learn how to use the microphone phone that I bought. <laughs>
It's more complicated than recording with my headset mic, which records just the right volume and doesn't need much editing to my novice's ear. The last time I used my Yeti microphone, my voice certainly sounded smoother, but everything was too quiet. I know I can bring the audio into Audacity and boost the volume, and maybe later in the game I'll buckle down and learn that program, but for now what works works. I hope it's interesting to listen to me talk about this stuff. It's like always on my mind. I've got one last panel to line before going into the finishing touches. I hope the joke of this page comes across. It's supposed to be that, like, Blue was so preoccupied feeling awkward about the long hug that when Cider quickly snaps into introductions, Blue is caught off guard. Also, drawing Blue from the back was a very interesting angle. Her vibe feels completely different from the back. Hopefully she doesn't look so weird it detracts from the flow of the page. And here I go, adding the finishing touches. I decided again not to show the process of adding in text because I think it's hella boring. I also feel like I might have been a little too liberal filling in black in the second panel but I'm man enough to admit that I'm too lazy to go back and change anything. You know, I like this page. I think it's cute, and I had a lot of fun drawing it. And really, that's all there is to say about it. <laughs> Guess who found out iPads can screen record? It's finally time to tackle one of the more rough comic pages. I start by stealing the couch from another page and tracing over it for the first panel. Do I consider this cheating? Yes. Did that stop me? No. Taking a comic from messy thumbnail to a clean sketch is always an interesting process. I'm actually a little rusty doing it because most of these comics were sketched and laid out by Danny from over a year ago. Shout out to his hard work, but now I have to pick up the slack and make sense of this mess. This is gonna be a bit of a process, and normally I would cut this part out, but I think it's interesting to watch. While working on this, I was drawing at my work desk, which isn't usually where I use my iPad, and for some reason it made my back hurt so much. I kept having to pause to stretch and be in agony. I knew my back was hurting because of where I was drawing, but I couldn't move locations because my iPad was plugged in and charging. Speaking of charging, while screen recording, the iPad burned so much juice that even though it was plugged in and charging, by the time I stopped recording, it had lost like 30% of its charge. Isn't that nuts? I didn't do another round of sketching considering how rough the preliminary sketch was, but I guess by this point I've drawn the characters so much that I can work off of rough lines. You know, I really like this panel of Blue Cider and Roswell sitting on the couch together. I love Blue's pose where they're perched on the armrest, and I like how all of their tails are to the left. All in all, it was a very satisfying panel to draw. 10 out of 10. hard time fitting all of the handwritten dialogue into the speech bubbles I drew in the sketch, but I knew that using the text tool would condense the words nicely, so I drew better speech bubbles than I had sketched and prayed that the words would fit. I didn't record the process of adding the text, so I'll let you know right now that they did fit. They fit very well. I think Roswell is so cute in this comic. They get to info dump about their project, Elves Out for Blood, The Dark Spectacle which is a fan game for the Elves Out for Blood series, which is kind of like Danganronpa. I wouldn't say that Danganronpa is one of Shelby's special interests, but we both did go through a Danganronpa phase around the same time in 2013, I think. I stopped being interested in Danganronpa after the second game, but I believe they're still making them. Yeah, I just checked. There's three main games and four spin-offs. That's pretty prolific. So the whole story of this comic is that Blue asks Roswell what they do, and Roswell says they make fan games for Elves Out for Blood. Blue makes rabbit hole videos and is a streamer, so so this comic kind of tees up Blue streaming Elves Out for Blood the Dark Spectacle, which kicks off the plot of the final four pages. There's not really a punchline, but I think that this page has a lot of cute and rewarding details, like Blue's hat being knocked off by her ears when she realizes who Roswell is, and Roswell's info dumping expressions with the little sparkles, and Cider simply going, it's really good, under Roswell's huge speech bubble about their project. Also, Blue saying she never streamed Elves Out for Blood Dark Spectacle because it was too confusing, and Roswell saying, Well, it would be my greatest pleasure to answer any and all of your questions. That is such a Shelbyism when it comes to our project Neocosmos. <laughs> this page really has I love my wife energy. 
All that's left is to fix up Roswell's eyes and add some sparkles and add black to the background of a few panels and I'm ready to add text and finish off screen. And here's the finished page. I'm very proud of this one. It shows how close we are to being finished and that's really exciting. I think now's a good time to check back in on our progress. We had 13 out of 24 pages done, and now we have 17 out of 24 pages done. That's 70% done! We only have 6 more pages to do. We can do it! So this next page is an interesting one. Originally, it was going to be a one-off comic where Cider was sitting at their desk and staring at a blank piece of paper before saying, ah, it seems I've forgotten how to draw, and then eating the piece of paper ravenously. And as funny as that is, it is kind of a double beat with the comic where Cider is thinking about all the different things they could make and then going, why am I like this, while staring at their desk with a blank piece of paper. It wasn't that inspired of an idea and I scrapped it for a comic about Roswell's perfect day, where they wake up, eat, work all day and night, and then go to bed happy. It kind of balances out the ratio of Roswell to Cider comics too, so that's good. I contemplated giving this comic page the actual title of Roswell's perfect day, but none of the other comic pages have titles, so I didn't want it to stick out that much. Hopefully the vibe is still there. Having this page actually serves a greater purpose too, as it shows how content Roswell is working in making elves out for blood dark spectacle. Does that sound ominous? It sounds ominous. There might be a reason for that. Oh, I realized I never mentioned it before, but Roswell has a pet caterpillar. I can't remember exactly what type of caterpillar she is, but that's what's sitting on Roswell's lap in the first panel. I decided caterpillars in the cats and lizards world are what cats and lizards would own instead of pet cats. I'm not sure what dogs are. Maybe they're worms like in Spongebob. <laughs> I really feel like I could have added more clutter to Roswell's desk at the end of the day, but I was feeling lazy and three extra cans is good enough for me. Also, because I drew them eating breakfast but not any other meal, this time lapse almost implies that Roswell didn't eat anything all day, and maybe they didn't. Hyperfocus is real. I hope they ate something good though. Take care of yourself, Roswell. At a certain point, I accidentally deleted the sketch I had for the second half of the page. Sometimes you goof up pretty hard, but I took it in stride and sketched everything out again before going in to line it. I think the replacement sketches I drew looked better anyway. They've got more going on and with better framing. Except for the middle panel of Roswell walking, that one stayed exactly the same. You know, there's a joy in drawing a character just being happy. This page was a lot of fun to do. And it's done! Here's the final. I really love Roswell's yawn and the panel of them eating breakfast. I like drawing the back of Roswell's head and rim lighting their body. This is one of those pages where I'm just really proud of the end result. One might even say, it's really good. Let's move on to the next one, shall we? I decided to do the back cover of the zine next, in Photoshop again. I know I said I'd only do it once, but I lied. But again, it's for a special page. I had the idea to draw Roswell and Cider lying together in the grass, young adult romance movie style. I wanted them to be in a ring of flowers, which is kind of like a fairy circle, but not. It's a cat and lizard circle. I originally had Cider lying on their back, but that felt too open of a pose, and I wanted them propped up and really listening to what Roswell is saying. I also got to draw the little hole in their jeans for their tail, which is always a fun detail. I feel like I drew this Roswell really nicely. Aside from their eyes and their tail, I hardly had to undo any strokes, which is new. I guess I'm really getting used to drawing these characters now. I'm almost going to be sad when it's over. But well, we're still far from over. I've got so many more pages left. I believe the flowers ended up being periwinkles, although periwinkles have five petals and not four. It's a circle of very special periwinkles. Or rather, a circle of four individual four-petaled periwinkles that I copy and pasted a bunch. That's a bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> Seeing the two of them lying together is giving me feelings. 
I want to lie in a field of grass and flowers with my friends again. I never did that before COVID, but you know, maybe I will once we all get vaccinated. I was really excited to color this back page, as it's going to be the only time we see Roswell and Cider in color. Because let me tell you, I am not coloring a full comic. No way, no how. I did that once before in my life, and it was miserable. I wanted to keep the colors simple, because as I have established, I am not a coloring man. That said, I think the colors I chose with the grass and the flowers are very pretty. Oh, I just realized, Roswell's head is haloed by the flowers, and Cider is outside of the flower circle gazing in lovingly. Aw, that's really sweet. I wasn't thinking about that while I was drawing this. Here's the final illustration. I added some grass texture to the ground at Shelby's off-camera request, and I think that really tied it all together nicely. And here's the cover next to the back page, so we can see how well they go together. The colors evoke the feeling of springtime to me. What about you? If you were at a convention or a bookstore, would you pick this up? Alright. On to the next page, and my new white backboard for filming. I was so excited for this to arrive that I can completely forgive the fact that you can see the arm in the camera mount and the tip of my head reflected in the iPad screen. I think my filming surface must have been too well lit or something. I'm not sure why this suddenly became a problem. This page actually needed some heavy renovations. Originally it ended with Roswell leaving, but I wanted to put it between the page where Roswell comes over and the page where Blue and Roswell talk about elves out for blood to make the three pages cover one cohesive hangout. So instead of Roswell leaving, I have Blue having an extended moment where she realizes just how into each other Roswell and Cider are before Cider exclaims that they're best friends and then Blue almost loses it and has to text her girlfriend the juicy drama that she's witnessing. Here's the final page. I like Blue's expression in the final panel a lot. All in all, I'm pretty proud. We're getting down to the wire here, with Blue actually streaming Roswell's game. It was fun drawing a random still out of Elves Out for Blood Dark Spectacle, and drawing it in Roswell's style, too. For real authenticity, I could have had Shelby draw this, but actually that is a great idea. I should have done that, but it's too late now. I really like drawing rabbit hole video screens and like internet windows in general. I think there's something very pleasing about something so commonplace and artificial and hard being rendered by hand. I am consequently a huge fan of abstract vaporwave art of computer windows and stuff. So the plot of this page is that thanks to Blue shining a spotlight on Roswell's project, the company that owns Elves Out for Blood sends Roswell a cease and desist letter. Thus, just totally destroying Roswell's ability to keep doing their thing, which is like the only thing that they do.
and here's the final page. I fully just did not try with this elf's clothing. I, <laughs> I cannot even begin to explain what they are wearing, and frankly, I don't want to. It passes at a glance, and that's all that matters. And the slow slide down to the consequences. Ugh, I feel so bad for Roswell. Especially since I don't actually fully resolve this problem in this issue of Cats and Lizards. And I don't know if I'll make more after this. <laughs> Well, so, here's the thing. Sometimes, you think you're recording, and you're not actually recording. So when you start the next page, it's already half drawn. I'm willing to forgive me if you are. This page is a continuation of the final four pages, where Cider goes to console Roswell after they have to quit making their games. I was feeling really tired over the weekend as I drew this, but I was so compelled to work on the project because of just how close I was to finishing it. Because of how tired I was, I had a hard time lining everything to my liking, but in the end I somehow managed to finish it. Turns out, if you just keep going, eventually you get there. I think the recording must have messed up right here because Roswell's head just pops into existence. I'm not sure what that's about. Everything else was recorded just fine, so let's just add that to the pile of things that you're forgiving me for. <laughs> as uninspired as I was feeling, I do really like Roswell's pose here. Cider's was a bit messier, and drawing the couch was somewhat of a nightmare. But in the end, the final panel looked... well, it's passable. the panel that I pulled for reference for the bookshelf looks way higher effort than the page I'm working on, which is really funny. It's not that fair of a comparison because it is finished with shading and this page is still in progress. But I, th I think it turns out. I, I do. I, I think it turns out fairly well. Here's the final page. I must not have filmed shading it, so I'm sorry. That's a third thing for the pile. <laughs> the shading really pulls it all together, though. I think this page is nice. It's kind of meant to be a page that you read quickly before going on to the next one, and for that it serves its purpose very well. Here we are, at the second to last page. We're really getting close to the end here. For over a year, the first three panels of Roswell's rant had completely blank speech bubbles. Shelby and I only recently brainstormed together what Roswell was saying. In the end, we came up with, Dark Spectacle was my life, it was my income. The Elves Out for Blood fandom is like my only community. I guess I should make original stuff, but I don't know if my brain will let me. This is a pretty serious problem for Roswell. If I continued Cats and Lizards, I would have Roswell and Cider collaborate on a new original project. Project. What do you think they'd make together? I think it'd be a fantasy visual novel or something like that. I think the third panel is the first time any character has cried in Cats and Lizards. I'm usually such a big fan of making my characters cry that it's almost shocking that this is the first time. I'm letting down my roots! Because of how long Roswell's snout is, it was actually really hard positioning Roswell and Cider's bodies together on the couch. I feel like over the course of the comic, the more that I drew Roswell, the longer their snout got. Chameleons don't even have snouts at all. Maybe Roswell is part crocodile. Here's the final comic. I love how this came out. I think it's such a real and tender moment. I really love these characters, and they really love each other. And the end is almost upon us all. 
Speaking of the end, at long, long last, it's here. From the first preliminary Cats and Lizards comics last year to today right now, this project is finally coming to completion. I really and truly could not have done it without you. And yeah, I'm serious. I know this video isn't going to get massive views, but for the few of you who have stuck around until now, you're the one I was doing this for all along. So thank you. So anyway, this final page is of course the kiss. There's some debate to be had about whether or not ending on a kiss is satisfying, and I agree that there's so much more to their story beyond this point, but for now, I think it's a good place to leave Roswell and Cider off on. Hopefully the ending of this comic leaves the reader, or the viewer, that's you, feeling like everything is going to be okay and that they'll get through it together. Because Roswell and Cider are based on myself and Shelby, these two have a very special place in my heart, and it was a pleasure to work so hard to finish their story. Leading up to the release of this video, I've been posting more Cats and Lizards comics online, and the response has been really great to see. Roswell has absolutely stood out as a favorite among those who leave comments and tags. I think Roswell is my favorite character too, although Cider is more fun to draw. Who's your favorite character? What was your favorite page? Let me know in the comments below, won't ya? I really love the final exchange here, the we did it again and haha oops is so real and cute. I think it captures the intimacy of the moment and their friendship very well. And here it is, the final, finished page of the zine. We did it! We really fucking did it! I finished a project! <laughs> so this zine had 19 pages of comics and 5 special pages including the front and back covers. That was a lot of work I just did! Whew! Thank you all so much for watching and please like, comment, and subscribe. Maybe check out my Patreon where I shared updates of this project the whole way. Patreon.com slash the crags. My final thoughts are simply, I will never make a video this long again.